you going to play the video? Yes. All right. Uh, members of the jury, you're about to see the video that they have been referring to. Um, please uh, pay attention. Please listen carefully. Uh, parts of it may be difficult to hear. Uh, the video that you're about to see is evidence, so you may consider this along with the other evidence during this trial. Mr. Henry, can we just the a little bit? Yeah, we've just turned down uh, a bank or two over the monitor. What is he on? Whoa! 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 He's on camera. Guys, let's go. <laughs> on camera. He's on 4K. Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yes! 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 From the for the culture! For the culture! Who is that? For the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! It doesn't matter! He said he was looking for a little girl! He said he was looking for a little girl! You looking for a little girl? Yeah! That's exactly what he said! Where's the house? So before the prosecution played the video, they called their first witness. And I've decided to skip the first witness due to lack of relevance. He's the owner of River's Edge, the company that rents out the tubes. He wasn't even on the scene when the stabbings occurred. So there really isn't any reason to cover this. Instead, I want to spend some time going over this footage because as far as I'm concerned, Mew is a liar and the kids are just plain wrong. So I'm left with nothing but the videos. So just let me show you why I still think this is self-defense. So when the video starts up, Mew is running right over to the kids. And this first, this first interaction that's caught on camera is extremely weird. And I can understand why they aren't happy. If I were in their situation and this guy ran over to me, he and I would be having some problems. He's walking around their tubes. His attention seems to be on their tubes and the water. He doesn't seem to care that much about the kids at all. 
I certainly can't explain what it is he's doing. Supposedly, he's looking for a missing cell phone. I don't know if that's true, but you can see that his attention is focused on the water and the tubes, and he's not really paying attention to the kids until this moment right here. Do you think it's possible that these drunk and stoned teenagers were so paranoid that adults might catch them drinking and smoking that they were doing everything they could to hide that from everyone else? Is it possible that Mew mistook their paranoia for guilt? I don't know, and it doesn't even matter at this point because the kids are in full confrontation mode and they're not going anywhere now. They're too busy having the time of their lives ridiculing this old man for breaking some kind of unspoken river tubing etiquette of some kind. So then Mew tries to walk away from these tribal idiots as these two women are walking toward him. But he soon finds out that they aren't women. They're Karens. But they immediately begin screaming at him and accosting him by demanding that he walk further downstream, which is the opposite direction of where his, where his group is. Essentially, they're telling him to walk the plank. And these ladies aren't taking no for an answer. He's got to go. He's got to go now. And that's all there is to it. So then as Mew is waving over to his party, trying to get someone to come over and help him, more and more people start crowding around and flooding in. So now Mew's got quite a large crowd blocking his path back to his tubes where his group is. The teenagers are wildly out of control and full of drunk aggression. So they're up in his face. They're screaming at him. They won't listen to a word that he says. It's got to be quite terrifying at this point. But the teenagers certainly seem to be enjoying themselves, don't they? And that's unfortunately when something happens that kicks off the rest of this video. But it takes place off screen and we don't get to see it. The official belief is that he hit the blonde girl. And for whatever reason, no one seems to have the same account of what happened to her. Some people say she was punched. Some people say she was pushed. Some people say she was slapped. I don't know. All I know is I even thought that I saw her get punched in that video. And I'm not kidding. I went back over that video several times and even thought that someone had edited the version I was looking at. And I went searching for the unedited version that had the punch in it. I never found it because it doesn't exist. And I don't know if it's because it's just such an eventful video or if someone put some sort of voodoo curse on this video. But everyone seems to be confused about what happened to that girl. But they all believed at the time that he had indeed punched her in the face. So, of course, the next thing that happens, they start hitting Mew in the head. They knock him into the water. They're basically just giving him a gang-style beatdown. And at this point, regardless of what Mew has done in the past couple of minutes, regardless of what he's done throughout his entire life, how many more blows to the head do you think he can take before he loses consciousness and floats down the river? And then we're looking at a completely different trial. Not to mention the fact that if you're a mammal living on this planet and you're being attacked, you're going to do whatever you can to survive. It doesn't matter what you did two minutes ago. The programming goes deep. You don't just want to survive. You have to survive. But just take a look at what happens as Mew is trying to get back up again. He looks up and sees that the guy in the orange trunks is coming for him. And you can see him gr grab the knife from the bottom of the river because I guess he just dropped it as he was falling. So he quickly grabs it and stabs the guy in the orange trunks as he was trying to push Mew back down. Mew stuck the knife out and protected himself. And this guy basically got disemboweled. Is it because Mew pulled the knife up? Possibly. But... It also could be because that guy pushed Mew backwards. You could almost say that this guy sort of impaled himself and then helped Mew disembowel him. Then it appears that the guy with the jean shorts was holding his hand out to help Mew up, but I guess he faked him out. So Mew gets up on his own. There's more confusion. And for whatever reason, I can't tell what she was doing, but the redheaded girl gets stabbed. It doesn't appear that he had any reason to stab her. So in this case, I can understand why the jury found him guilty on that one. Immediately after that, 
he also stabs the guy in the jean shorts. Look, I'm not really sure if the guy in the jean shorts was really there to help him or not. I know he claims he was. Doesn't really seem that way. But I think he was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Once again, this is another charge. I can see why the jury found him guilty. But then after stabbing the guy in the jean shorts, then he gets attacked by Isaac. And we know that this is Isaac because the hand that you see reaching for Mew's throat is wearing Isaac's bracelet. So as Isaac is reaching for Mew's throat, Mew reaches out and stabs him directly in the heart, which killed him. And I got to say, I don't think that's homicide. I think that's self-defense. The kid was grabbing for this man's neck. Perhaps it would have been better if Mew stabbed him somewhere else other than in the heart. But in that moment, he had a split second. And Isaac himself created that situation by reaching for Mew's neck. After that, Mew slowly walks away. He ditched the knife. He lied to the cops. He lied in his interrogation. And like I said earlier, I think he was even lying in the trial during his testimony. And I remember the prosecution saying something about all his lies, that it proved that he knew exactly what he was doing and that he knew he had done something wrong. I don't agree with this. I think the fact that he lied only proves one thing, and that is that he was not sure that what he had done was right. And don't get me wrong, I can't stand liars. But I can understand why he lied. I just don't think he should have, considering he's such a terrible liar. And if it weren't for this video evidence, I would definitely believe he was guilty. I look at this and I see self-defense. I can understand why a lot of people don't. But that's just what I see. And I appreciate it if you've listened up to this point. I just wanted to quickly explain why I see self-defense. But I'll be back very soon with some actual testimony. The second witness is one of the teenagers, so we'll be dealing with him in the very next video. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Thanks for watching.